Hi, and welcome to Journey's Workshop. This is part two on how to build your own standalone map counter. I put this together for a friend and follow his track requirements. It's a three lane Skelectric lap counter track that uses slot switches. And it's supposed to display in one screen, plus gantry lights, which are on both sides and also has sound. So let's see how this operates. There's an on-off switch on the side and it will open a presentation. Then a menu where you can set up a number of laps. The default is 10 laps. And these two switches here is to increase and decrease the number of laps. And the last one is an enter button. So I'm going to set up just for a couple of laps to demonstrate and press enter. The LEDs were clear after a random value generated by the sketch. And as we cross the line, it counts the laps. This is the final lap on this lane. And you start playing a tune, all the LEDs are on. And you will stop as soon as you press any of the three buttons. So let's see how all of this works. These track pieces originated from this piece of track. Previously, my friend already cut this bit in half, which belonged to that side. And he used to set up them like this. And it used to count laps these two on this end and one on that end. And so I completed this process by welding the pieces of track with a soldering iron. And I had a spare Skelexia straight, which was perfect to make the underside cover. And then I used these original pieces to be able to trace where the holes are. And in this case, it was set up like so. And under this cover, there are wires traveling to the switches, which were already here. And if we have a look inside, For each switch, I ran a wire from this board to each pole on each switch, as in pole 1, one side of the switch, and they're interconnected from pole 2 to ground, because this time I decided to use the 80 mega 328 p internal pull-up resistor. The two sets of LEDs, one on each end, are interconnected the positive wires travel across, like so. And all the grounds are connected together on each end. And each pair going across share a 220 ohms resistor. The buttons are used for the menu are on momentary switches, which means they're always on until you press a switch. The reason for that is simply because it makes it easier to operate. 
no need to push all the way to activate or in this case to deactivate. However, on the sketch, it will require to write using opposite conditions, which I'll gain to that in a minute. And they are also connected using internal pull-up resistors, as mentioned before. The project box measures approximately 120 by 65 by 40 millimeters, which is just big enough for this project. But I will recommend you to choose a slightly larger one especially in case if you want to have a relay or more in order to cut the power on the track. The display is a 20 by 4 characters which takes almost all the footprint here and you use an I2C module and you only need four wires to operate. The speaker here I've repurposed from a, an old Mac Mini, but you can also use a piezo, but you will need to have a 220 ohms resistor between the microcontroller and the positive or of the piezo. The board you see here is one of my earlier prototypes, and the one I made available on eBay is a blue one. And it's a good way if you wish to support this channel and save you some precious time. There is a minimum requirement to run the 80 mega 328p, the microcontroller itself. Preferably get one with a bootloader. You will need two 22 picofarad ceramic capacitors, a 16 megahertz oscillator, a 10k resistor, and a hundred nanofarads capacitor. You can power this using an external regulator 5 volts DC supply or using a USB to serial adapter or, a, or build a non-board voltage regulator which is what is here in this case. At the moment the, the power regulator transistor is on the underside of the board which is an LM7805 and also you need a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and an 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and here it's powered by a 9 volt battery which fits here nice and snug if you're wondering what a USB to serial data is this is what it is. Then you plug this USB to your computer and you can upload sketches from your Arduino IDE. And these headers here is basically the socket to plug it in, like that. And you also need an 100 nanofarads capacitor that will sit here to be able to run that. And this one is an FT232RL in this case. Now looking at the sketch, you will need a cup of libraries, which is the liquid crystal I square C, the wire library. This here is a way to set up the address of your I square C liquid crystal, which in my case is this here. Now there are sketches on the Arduino IDE for you to find the I2C address used on your Arduino board, for example. Try to describe here as much as I could, but I'll mainly go through where you can do some adjustments. For example here, you can set up the number of lanes you have on your track, in this case three, the ranking positions, it can only be three in this case, and it has to be the same amount as here because the way all of this operates the same goes for the lane sensor pins it has to be three if you have three lanes now the buttons if you set up just where I did here 
use three buttons. I know you can implement a rotary encoder to this code, which you won't need any of that in the end. This is where you set up the default amount of laps when you switch it on. You shouldn't change this at all. Uh, this is for the LEDs. If you're having less LEDs, let's say if you have three, you need to put three here as well. You shouldn't touch any of that because that's to do with the lap counting. Now this is where the fun is because I transcribe this tune to be played on the Arduino and this is based on an existing code that you can get on the Arduino ID which originally has uh, the Tetris tune and had all the notes in the range that your piezo can play and so I reduced to only the notes I'm playing the tune this is where you can write the score which I invite you to change that to whichever tune you like there is also a, a whole library on the internet of tunes you can implement here these are the, the settings you need to play the tune now on the welcome message I put Johnny's workshop but you know you can put something different or not have it at all but you do need to have initiate the LCD and the backlight otherwise you won't come on this is all to do with the setup of the lap counting the buttons the LEDs and the buzzer Now in here in the loop is all the behavior on on how it travels through the menu and how it goes from menu to lap counting to the end of the race and then back to menu. This is where you can personalize the tone. For example, this is the tone and the length this is to do with holding the button because you can also hold the button for over a second and it starts incrementing or decreasing the number of laps very quickly so you don't have to to press for each extra or minus lap and the race is finished here it's the race finished behavior this will turn on all the LEDs and this is where you place the tune all the way to here and you can interrupt the song by pressing any of the buttons and we'll switch off all the lights and go back to the menu by resetting all the data as well which is at the bottom here reset data this is the gantry behavior and it's got a beep for each light that comes on and this is where the gantry drops in the random count and the count is here between a second and five this is where the race starts and here you can add codes to power the relays and when the race finish this is where you can add code to switch off the power of the track using the relays now all of here is to do a lap counting. You shouldn't touch that really. Unless you want to change the tone. At the moment on the fastest lap, it's a higher tone than when it's a normal lap. And that's pretty much it for the code. And that's it for now. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.